What is going on everyone? The question is, should you use Firebase for your website or app? Now this is a question that has plagued many developers since Firebase came around. And it still continues to plague many developers. But the thing is, the advice that I hear on this is mostly from people who are like pure backend engineers who don't really have an appreciation for I think what Firebase gives because they're so comfortable living in that backend world that they've been living in. But let's talk about this question. And I want to share my story a little bit and then we'll get into some things that I think you should be considering that I think, you know, a lot of people just don't really think about when it comes to Firebase. And I think it's really important to, to kind of give that some thought. My own story is that I'm, you know, I've used Firebase in the past for apps. Uh, I'm currently working on my own startup and it's going to be like a web platform. It was a mobile app at one point. I started with Firebase and I have no regrets about that because the great thing about Firebase is it allows you to get started really quickly, move really quickly with pretty minimal effort on the back end. And the great thing is that you really don't have to, you know, manage any back end infrastructure, which is sort of the whole point of Firebase. Now, having said that, more recently, like within the past week or so, I've learned more, my requirements have changed. When I say learned more, I've learned more about the problem I'm solving, not necessarily the tech stack. I've learned more about the problem I'm solving. My requirements have changed a little bit. And so I've made the decision that in some cases for some Firebase products, it doesn't make sense for me to use Firebase. Most notably, Firebase hosting, it doesn't make sense for me to use that. I'm moving to Vercel because I'm building a Next.js app. And I think that their hosting platform for Next.js is far superior to whatever Firebase currently can do. And I think in the near to medium, maybe even long-term future can do. The other thing is uh, the database. Firestore is amazing. We'll talk more about that later in the video. So if you're interested in that, stick around. But it has its limitations. And I think that I've reached those limitations in my project and where it's kind of headed. So that's sort of my story. But let's talk about something that I think a lot of people, they talk about, but like not enough in my opinion. And that is, what is your end goal? Do you want to just build something cool? Do you want to build something that you think will be a small project or maybe a little business for you? Or are you trying to build something that is going to like rival Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook or rival Google or rival Tim Cook and Apple? Like, is that your goal? Or do you want to build something that is going to be an enterprise solution that you're going to go and sell to enterprise customers? These are three really different things. I think depending on which one you go with, it really changes what you should be doing in regards to Firebase. If you want to be just building something cool, then frankly, I don't really think it matters because you can choose any part of the puzzle, any technology, you're good, you're going to have a great time using it and you're going to win no matter what. If anything, what I would say to do is pick out the pieces of the development puzzle that you do have interest in working on and ones that you don't have interest in working on. And get, you know, elect to use technology that will allow you to do the things that you want to do and allow you to outsource the things that you don't want to do. The next thing is, are you trying to take over the world? And by that, I don't mean actually become like an evil dictator. I mean, like, are you just trying to maybe take over like Facebook? Because Facebook kind of like has a big stranglehold on the world and stuff like that as far as social media goes. In the case of a startup founder, you're not in the business of managing database infrastructure unless your actual startup is centered around managing database infrastructure. Chances are that's not the case. So in that in that probable reality, your your job is not to manage infrastructure, database infrastructure. Your job is to build the application and just use a database to make the application more useful. And in that case, that's where Firebase shines. When you want to build something in which you want to just simply focus on the app itself and not worry about any of the underlying how things get implemented and how things work. You just want to worry about your application code. So front end, back end, API or something like that. That would be the time to use Firebase um, so for startups, Firebase is really, really great. Before I go on to the next question, I also want to mention that if you have interest in reading this video, like in a, in a written format, check out my Substack and my Medium post on this exact topic. You can find the links in the description. Next is, I hear this all the time, Google is going to kill Firebase. Google kills everything. And it it generally comes from some, you know, purist engineer who like wants to go about the engineering in a very methodical a proper way. They care about correctness when it comes to engineering. And I'm not saying you shouldn't care about that. What I'm saying is, again, 
think about what what you're doing, what your end goal is, right? That should play a huge role into the technologies that you use. But secondly, I don't think that Firebase, sorry, I don't think that Google is going to kill off Firebase. And here's why. Number one, it makes them money. The other thing is if you look at the products that Google has killed off, they actually kind of make sense why they killed them off. Let's look at Google's most recent, you know, killed by Google, according to the killed by Google website. The most recent product that Google is getting rid of is Jamboard, which is a collaborative digital whiteboard product that they offer. I think I've only ever heard of one person using it. And that kind of brings me to my point. If you look at the products that Google kills off, none of them are category leaders. According to a company that did this, like they have like a report on a lot of market share stuff called Six Sense. Jamboard only has 3.3% of the market share when it comes to collaborative digital whiteboards. Let's look at that in contrast to the number one leader, which is a company called Miro. They estimate that they have like 89% of the market share in the, in the digital collaborative whiteboard space. So if you look at that, like a company like Google is going to come out with a lot of stuff, but they expect all of these things to be dominant players in the same way that search is a dominant player for them. When they can't get that, they're not going to want to keep that product around because they're probably spending millions of dollars and especially because I think a lot of Google stuff is free. So they're spending millions of dollars on this and they're not probably getting the results that they actually want, which is why they killed it. So when you look at it in that context, through that perspective, it actually, the question should be, why didn't they do it sooner? Not why are they doing it at all? The next thing when it comes, when it comes to Google killing off stuff is that not only does Firebase make the money, as I mentioned before, but I think Firebase is also a part of their sales strategy for their cloud efforts. And what I mean by that is that Firebase is an abstraction over GCP. It's all backed by GCP under the hood, right? And it's also, it is, it is an easier way for people to get into using cloud because most people, when they go do something, when they go start developing stuff, uh, especially a lot of like smaller devs or newer or smaller companies or startups, they do so with like a point solution in the form of an app or a website rather than like these massive platforms that maybe you would need something like all of GCP or AWS to be building on top of. I think that Firebase actually is like the top of Google's sales funnel when it comes to expanding and growing their cloud platform. People will start using Firebase because it's so easy and then they will eventually, when they graduate from Firebase services, they'll eventually realize, hey, wait, I'm already in Google. Why don't I try this GCP thing out and I can use those products? Really, it makes sense for Google to expand Firebase, which they've, they have been doing, um, instead of trying to kill it off because it actually acts as a gateway to get more people to use GCP, which ultimately will help them grow their cloud service. The next thing that you should think about is how much control do you actually want or need? Firebase is a serverless platform and it abstracts away a lot of responsibility from you as a developer. So you don't have to worry about managing infrastructure and things like that. That's a huge question. Do you wanna be able to control the virtual machine that your server is running on? Do you need to control the virtual machine that your server is running on? In most cases, I would argue that you probably don't, but perhaps for whatever reason you do. Maybe there is a certain feature that you want, or maybe there's some configuration that you want, or maybe it's just like a, I don't wanna say paranoia, but like, you know, you, you just feel more, you, you feel better about things when you're in control of them, then, you know, maybe Firebase isn't for you. Chances are, if you just wanna focus on building your awesome app that's gonna take over the world, then you don't actually need to have that level of control, in which case Firebase is gonna be fine. Another consideration, and this is, if I'm honest, uh, I think a bit frustrating when it comes to uh, Firebase, and I've had to kind of, you know, create my own, my own solutions to this problem, is the authentication, uh, authorization, and security. So Firebase has a product called Firebase Auth that will get you authentication. That's awesome. I'm a big fan of that. It's very easy to do. You know, you can I don't know, you basically just like call a function and it kind of just like does it for you. It's actually maybe a couple functions. It's pretty great, honestly. Um, then they also have security rules, which are more basic, more on the basic side, but they, you know, they're really quick. They're really fast. 
Um, so that's cool. That's great. It gets you somewhere for sure. Then they also have this thing called custom auth claims, which are part of the authentication product, which basically allows you to kind of create like role based auth within your product. Now, the problem that I have personally is that I needed to be able to do object level permissions based on relationships to that object, which I found um, not that easy to do. The other thing as well is that I, because Firestore is a, uh, you know, a document database I'm using currently, I'm using a graph database called Neo4j for all the relationships between things to model that. And so I couldn't just use the security rules, even you know, if that were possible, I needed to be able to work with those relationships, which means that I have to do like this kind of like custom solution. So that's something that is a bit of a limiting factor when it comes to Firebase is that security uh, authorization, it's there, but it is a bit limited. Uh, the the final big thing that I want to talk about, and actually there's a couple things that I didn't mention that are in the article. So if you're interested in those things, check out the link in the description and go read the rest of the article because I do go into more detail. The other big thing that people will talk about is price. And it's true, Firebase can be more expensive than just buying the resources and managing it yourself. That's 100% correct. But one, for starters, the free tier is quite generous and chances are you will be able to get yourself off the ground, maybe even reach a point of profitability without actually going over the free tier. I've yet to go over the free tier. I've been fine. Um, the other thing though, is that these are totally different pricing models. So Firebase is of course pay for what you use versus just pay for the availability of something in, in, you know, buying a, a virtual machine and just having it be on all the time. I think people think about this one, not necessarily wrong, but they only think about the tangible cost that they see online. In reality, you should be thinking about it in terms of total cost of ownership, which means how much will this cost me across the board, everything that I need to put into this. So paying the cloud provider for that service, my time, and my resources otherwise, like also my opportunity costs. So what could I be doing otherwise if I'm not putting in that time into working on this or into managing that backend infrastructure? When you think about it that way, that's why serverless exists. And that's why it really does shine because it abstracts away so much of the burden of needing to manage infrastructure for you that I think in my opinion, even though it is a bit costly, it's actually probably pretty inexpensive when you factor in your time and what you're able to accomplish by using it. Chances are Google is not going to be killing Firebase. It just doesn't really make sense for them to do that. In the beginning of a project, you probably won't have a complete understanding of what it is, what direction it's going in, and thus what the requirements of it are. So until you have a really, really solid understanding of what those requirements are, you should not be using, or sorry, you should be using Firebase. That's when Firebase shines. It absolutely shines because it allows you to iterate as quickly as possible or just a lot faster. And then you can actually start to learn the things you should be learning, which are what are the actual requirements? What am I building? What's the direction that I'm taking this in? You should also consider using Firebase when you just want to focus on building your app. So maybe a Flutter app, a Next.js app, instead of actually having to worry about virtual machines and networking and things behind the scenes. You should also, and this might sound a little counterintuitive because Firebase can be more expensive, but given what we just just talked about in the pricing section, you should consider using Firebase if you can't afford or don't have the resources to manage the backend infrastructure yourself. When it comes to Firebase features, you can do these two things. You Well, you can do three things. You can use all of it forever. You can decide to use certain features and not other features, which is what I'm doing at this point. You can also graduate from certain things. So if you're using Firestore and one day you decide that you need to use SQL, you can go and use Postgres through Cloud SQL or something like that and leave Firebase behind or Firestore behind. So you can totally do that. All of that's valid. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you guys think about Firebase? And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. See ya.